Ashley, you're, you're good? We're good up here. All right, here we go. Recording in progress. We are good. Floor is yours, Amy. All right, I will call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of April 13th, 2023. Uh, Todd, will you take roll call? Certainly. Would the representative from the property management department please state his or her name for the record? Joseph Callahan. Transportation department? Amy Gordon. Inspectional services department? Brian Ronan. Water and sewer commission? Denise Devlin. Disabilities commission? Sarah Leon. And public works is not present, but we do have quorum. Uh, at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, I'll entertain a motion for the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on March 30th, 2023. I make uh, a motion to approve the minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes of the, to accept the minutes of the PIC hearing held on March 30th, 2023. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, uh, public hearing item number one on a joint petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department and the City of Boston Public Works Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as a new and relocated pedestrian ramps, street lighting infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, speed humps and raised crosswalks. Harrison Ave at Harvard and at Bennett Street, Harvard Street at Harrison Ave, Bennett Street at Harrison Ave. Hudson Street, generally at address uh, 55 to 57 between Neyland Street and Harvard Street. Uh, new business 320-2023 as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan, Neighborhood Slow Streets Program, Harrison Ave, Bennett Street, Harvard Street, Chinatown, five sheets dated April 13, 2023. Good morning, uh, my name is Radu Nan with Kettleston Associates here in support of uh, Boston Public Works and Boston Transportation Department. Present um, the, uh, uh, we present the uh, <clears throat> proposed improvements uh, and changes along Harrison Avenue at Bend Street. Um, at this intersection, um, the proposed changes include realignment of uh, the existing curb, widened sidewalks, um, um, install a raised crosswalk on the north side of um, Harrison Avenue north of Bennett Street. Um, includes new drainage infrastructure, uh, the relocation of a 12 inch water line to um, allow for that drainage uh, infrastructure installation, and the reconstruction of um, pedestrian ramps. Um, on the plan in front of you, there are no changes from the information presented during the new business. All right, questions or comments from commission members? Okay. Uh, PIC staff? Uh, just one. Oh, we're, we're going through them, I got it. You can crank through them all and we'll do questions at the end. Go ahead, Rudy. <clears throat> okay, um, the next location is at the intersection of Harrison Avenue and Harvard Street. Um, proposed uh, repairs this location include realignment of the edge line um, north of Harvard Street along Harrison Avenue, the installation of a raised crosswalk, uh, reconfiguration and installation of new drainage um, infrastructure. Uh, the relocation of a water line to allow for that green infrastructure to be installed, uh, the planting of two um, new trees and existing tree wells, um, the repairs to street lighting conduit and rewiring of um, street uh, lighting in this uh, intersection, and the relocation of one um, street light. Um, improvements also include reconstruction of sidewalks and pedestrian ramps at the intersection. Um, and on this plan, there are no changes um, 
from uh, the information presented during the new business uh, meeting. Is that everything? Yep. <clears throat> All right. Questions and comments from commission members? PIC staff, public? Uh, I'll take this opportunity to remind the public if you wish to add testimony or ask questions, please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. Uh, Redu, you and I talked about this yesterday. Just want to confirm. Um, previously, there had been one speed hump that was being moved on Hudson Street. That's no longer the case. We can remove that from the record here. That's correct, yes. Okay, great. So the Hudson Street improvement will be stricken from the record. Yes, thank you. All right, I will entertain a motion on uh, public hearing item number one. I move to approve a joint petition by the city's transportation and public works departments for specific repairs in the area of Harrison Avenue and Harvard and, and Bennett Streets as further read into the record by the chair. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Stained or opposed? All right. Uh, motion passes. Public hearing item number two. On a joint petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department and the City of Boston Public Works Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, street lighting infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, speed humps, and raised crosswalks. Moreland Street between Warren Street and Blue Hill Ave, Mount Pleasant Ave between Dudley Street, Blue Hill Ave, and Dudley Street, Dearborn Street, Whiting Street between Winthrop Street and Warren Street, Montrose Street between Warren Street and Moreland Street, Copeland Street between Moreland Street and Warren Street and Waverly Street, Perrin Street between Moreland Street and Alaska Street, Dunry Street between Warren Street and Aspen Street, Winthrop Street between Blue Hill Ave and Warren Street, Fairland Street between Mount Pleasant Ave and Moreland Street, Forest Street between uh, from south, uh, southeast of Forest Place to northwest of Adams Street, Greenville Street between Dudley Street and Winthrop Street slash Cleveland Street, Aspen Street between Copeland Street and Dunry Street, Alaska Street between Blue Hill Ave and Perrin Street, Waverly Street between Warren Street, Copeland Street, and Blue Hill Avenue. Langford Park at Copeland Street, Dudley Street at Mount Pleasant Ave, Blue Hill Ave. New Business 20, uh, 330-2023 is showing a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pacific Repair Plan Neighborhood Slow Streets Program Moreland, Mount Pleasant, Roxbury, 28 Sheets, dated April 13th, 2023. Good morning. Um, again, for the record, my name is Radu Nan with Kittleson Associates in support of um, uh, Public, uh, Boston Public Works and Boston Transportation Department present uh, specific repairs uh, within this area of um, um, Roxbury. Um, the, the speed humps <clears throat> um, maps, you know, in front of you it describes the installation of uh, 51 speed humps throughout the interior neighborhood streets um, to promote uh, slow uh, vehicle speeds. Uh, related to um, new paper, uh, posted speed limit within the neighborhood of 20 miles an hour. Um, these speed humps are generally located uh, about uh, 150 to 250 feet apart. Um, locations of these speed humps was field verified um, to avoid any um, overlap or conflict with uh, visible utility features such as manholes, um, castings, valves, um, also um, to avoid uh, residential driveways um, within the neighborhood. Um, I will slowly scroll through a, a more detailed location of each of these um, speed humps and then um, uh, start to describe the specific repairs that a um, couple of intersections within the neighborhood. The first intersection <clears throat> where we're proposing um, repairs is along Mount, uh, Mount Pleasant Avenue, generally at Mount Pleasant Terrace, which is a private way. Uh, within this area, the proposed changes include realignment of the edge lines, reconstruction, widening of the sidewalks, uh, reconstruction of pedestrian ramps, um, and the installation um, of a race crosswalk at the entrance of Mount Pleasant um, Playground. Uh, additional changes include the relocation of um, a, two street lights within the project limit, 
Um, on this plan, um, we made one adjustment to a street light relocation um, as requested by Public Works street light uh, group, um, just east or south of uh, Mount Pleasant Terrace um, by 40 Mount Pleasant um, Avenue. Um, no additional changes are displayed here from uh, what was presented during the, um, the new business um, meeting. Would you like for me to go through all of them and, and ask questions at the end, or? Yep. Or what's Good. preferred? Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. So uh, the next location <clears throat> where uh, repairs are, are uh, being proposed are, is at the intersection of Moreland Street uh, and Fairland Street and, and Montrose Street. Um, the specific repairs include a relocation of the, um, the edge lines, reconstruction widening of the sidewalks, uh, reconstruction of pedestrian ramps, um, and the raising of the center of this intersection um, to promote uh, safer crossings at this location. Um, to support the installation of the race crosswalk, um, the repairs also include installation of new drainage structures, um, relocation of uh, street lights, uh, installation of new street light conduits, um, and I believe that's um, all we're proposing in this location. And no changes are, are, are uh, displayed on this plan from what was presented uh, during a, a new business uh, meeting. Um, <clears throat> the next intersection is adjacent um, along Montrose or Moreland Street at Copeland Street. Um, this is also a proposed raised intersection. Uh, the specific repairs include realignment um, of edge lines, widening of sidewalks, repairs to sidewalks, reconstruction of pedestrian ramps, um, relocation of a street light, um, new street light conduit, and, and new drainage. Um, structures to uh, allow for continuous you know, well drainage of this area. Um, the plan in front of you does not include any additional uh, changes from the presentation made during the uh, new business. Um, following location is along Copeland Street uh, at Langford Park. Uh, specific repairs here include um, just repairs to the sidewalk, uh, reconstructed pedestrian ramps, and the installation of a race crosswalk across Copeland Street, um, just southwest of uh, Langford Park, um, to promote or uh, um, benefit the, the installation of that race crosswalk. Uh, the specific repairs include new drainage structures <clears throat> uh, and some realignment of street light conduit. Um, there's no changes on the plan uh, from the presentation made during the, the new business meeting. Um, the location on screen right now is at Mount Pleasant Avenue, the intersection of Mount Pleasant Avenue and Forest Street. This location, the specific repairs include realignment of edge lines, uh, reconstruction, widening of sidewalks, reconstruction of pedestrian ramps, um, uh, repairs and reconstruction of uh, street light conduits and the reconfiguration or installation of new um, drainage structure um, at the intersection. Um, no changes um, were made to the plans uh, from the presentation um, provided during the, the new business meeting. Um, the location on the screen right now is um, along Pleasant Street between the intersection of uh, Mount Pleasant Avenue, Dudley Street, and Blue Hill Ave, and uh, Mount Pleasant Avenue and Forest Street. Um, the specific repairs between these two intersections along uh, Mount Pleasant Avenue include um, relocation of edge lines, widening of sidewalks, and reconstruction of sidewalks, reconstruction of pedestrian ramps, um, installation of new street lighting, including um, conduits um, and relocation of, of street lighting. Um, also proposing and installing a new drainage uh, feature. Um, and on plans, 
Um, we have outlined the area of the widened sidewalk uh, on the north side of Mount Pleasant Avenue um, that will likely support installation of a blue bike station. Um, that, is, that is one of the reasons for the widening of the sidewalk along Mount Pleasant Avenue between Forest Street and Dudley Street. Um, that is one change uh, to the plans uh, illustrated on, on, on these plans uh, based on comments we received during the um, new business meetings. And finally, the uh, last location we're proposing repairs is along Dunreed Street, uh, generally between 16th and 18th. Um, uh, Dun Dunreed Street, the specific repairs here include reconstruction of the sidewalks and installation of a raised crosswalk uh, or level ending um, areas. No changes to this plan um, were made since the presentation um, provided during a new business uh, meeting. I think that's it. All right. Uh, questions, comments by commission members? PIC staff or public? All set. All right. Uh, I will entertain a motion on public hearing item number two. I move to approve a joint petition by the city's transportation and public works department for specific repairs in the area of Moreland Street, Mount Pleasant Avenue, Whiting, Montrose, and Copeland Streets, Perrin, Dunreath, and Winthrop Streets, Fairland, Forest, and Greenville Streets, Aspen, Alaska, and Waverly Streets, Langford Park, and Dudley Street, as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, staying or opposed? All right. Uh, public hearing item number three on a petition by Rocco's 450 Cucina and Bar for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, relocated street lighting infrastructure and hydrants, as well as the closure of one driveway curb cut. Commercial Street at address number 450, generally east of Henchman Street. Henchman Street at Commercial Street, new business 330. 2023 is shown under the plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan 450 Commercial Street, Boston, one sheet dated January 23rd, 2023. Hi, I'm George Collins presenting for Rocco's Casino. From Boston Survey, um, you can see the plan I have displayed here where align, realigning the curb to um, move it out into the street. Um, we're taking, there were two spots where cars were parking. One was in front of a curb cut and one was in front of a fire hydrant and um, both were not parking spaces. So the curb cut no longer serviced the garage door that used to be there, it's gone now. So we just wanna realign the curb, move the hydrant to the edge stone and move the street light to the edge stone also. Great. Uh, questions or comments from commission members? PIC staff or public? All set. All right, I will entertain a motion on public hearing item number three. I move to approve a petition by Rocco's 450 Cucina in Bar for the making of specific repairs in the area of Commercial Street and Hitchman Street in Boston as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stand or opposed? Great. Uh, public hearing. Oh. Thanks, George. Uh, public hearing item number four on a petition by M. Cook, Inc. Uh, doing business as the Boston Sale Law for the granting of a projection license for the installation of a retractable awning over a portion of the sidewalk within Atlantic Avenue Public Way, Boston Proper, located at address number 80, generally north of Commercial Wharf, new business 330-2023 is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Awning License Plan, 80 Atlantic Avenue, Boston, one sheet dated February 23, 2023. Good morning, members of the commission. Uh, my name is Lisa Chow with VHB. We are also joined by Jamie Tipping, the restaurant owner of the Boston Sail Off, as well as Tom Miller from McDermott, Culty and Miller. Um, can, I just wanted to confirm everyone can see my screen. Yep. 
Okay, great. Thank you. On behalf of the applicant, we are here to re uh, request the approval of an awning license on Atlantic Ave for the Boston Sail Off uh, restaurant. At the new business hearing um, two weeks ago, there were a couple questions and comments uh, regarding the proposed awning. Um, so before you is an updated plan. Um, the changes made to this plan um, since new business hearing includes additional dimensions. Um, this was um, requested at the new business hearing to show the remaining existing sidewalk width as well as the width of the existing um, bike lane. Um, the other uh, comment that came up is um, to provide some contextual uh, background. So the awning is proposed in conjunction um, with proposed outdoor seating, outdoor cafe. Um, on the screen is a rendering that shows um, what is currently being proposed. Um, there's outdoor seating and the proposed awning, which is retractable, is um, intended to provide um, shade coverage over the outdoor dining. Um, one question that came up at the new business hearing was um, whether this proposed awning um, fell under the jurisdiction of PIC. Uh, the team did meet with PIC staff after the new business hearing, and the staff confirmed that this should be permitted as a projection license through the PIC process. The other question that came up during um, new business was regarding the drainage and sheeting of um, rainwater off of the awning. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the awning is proposed as shade coverage. Um, there are no side flaps to protect patrons from the rain. So just after discussing with um, the restaurant owner um, and based on their experience, um, their during inclement weather, such as rain, the awning won't be deployed because no one will be wanting to sit outside during the rain. So um, it will be retracted um, under inclement weather. Are there any other questions at this time? Thanks, Lisa. Uh, questions or comments from commission members? PIC staff or public? Uh, just want to confirm that the fact that this awning will not be deployed during inclement weather will be um, noted in the projection license um, and also should be noted on this plan. John, I just want to add the comment, just confirm that actually the contract that I have with Dorchester Awning, they explicitly state that if the awning stays open in inclement weather, including high winds, rain, or inclement weather, it will not be covered under the warranty. So that's under the contract of the Dorchester awning as well. It is strictly for shade. In your best interest, then. Perfect. Yes. All right. I will entertain a motion on public hearing item number four. I move to approve a petition by M. Cook Incorporated, DBA, the Boston Sale Loft, for the granting of a projection license uh, in the area of Atlantic Ave as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stand or opposed? Great. Uh, public hearing item number five on a petition of Cambridge Network Solutions for a grant of location with lead company status Thank and no participants to it. Thank you, Amy. Thank you no. all. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, on a petition of uh, Cambridge Network Solutions for the grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit within with City Shadow within Charter Street, Public Way, Boston Proper, located generally from Jackson Ave at the rear of one Michelangelo Street to Commercial Drive, New Business 330-2023 is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, 1 Michelangelo Street, Charter Street, Boston, one sheet dated February 2023. have anybody from Cambridge. Sorry about that. I was on mute. <laughs> Good morning, members of the PIC. My name is Erica Hudson. I'm from Sienna Engineering Group representing Cambridge Network Solutions. With me also is my colleague, Tom Agresta. As discussed during the new business meeting hearing two weeks ago, Cambridge Network Solutions is seeking grants of location on Michelangelo Street to place telecommunications conduit. Starting at Charter and Commercial Street, we will be breaking out of electrical manhole number 1319 
and placing conduit along Charter Street to the proposed Cambridge Network solution, shared handhold number one. The first section of conduit will consist of one four inch scheduled 40 PVC conduit and four 1.25 inch scheduled 40 PVC conduit city shadow from electrical manhole 1319 to propose Cambridge Network solution handhold number one. The next section of conduit will leave the proposed Cambridge Network Solutions handhold number one and continue southeast on Charter Street to the proposed Cambridge Network Solutions shared handhold number two. This will consist of four one-inch conduits, two of which are city shadow. The conduit will conclude at one Michelangelo Street, which will consist of one four-inch schedule 40 PVC communication conduit. If anyone has any questions, I will be happy to answer them at this time. Questions or comments from commission members? PIC staff or public? All set on this. I will entertain a motion on public hearing item number five. I move to approve a petition by Cambridge Network Solutions for a grant of location with lead company status in a vicinity of Charter Street as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, public hearing item number six on a petition by Cambridge Network Solutions for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Roxbury, Terra Street between Gore Street and Tremont Street, Gurney Street, Tremont Street at Terra Street slash Gurney Street, New Business 330 2023 is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan Proposed Lateral Conduit Placement, Terra Street, City of Boston, three sheets dated January 27, 2023. Good morning, members of the PIC. My name is Erica Hudson. I'm from Sienna Engineering Group representing Cambridge Network Solutions. With me also is my colleague, Tom Agresta. As mentioned, Cambridge Network Solutions is seeking grants of location on Terrace Street to place telecommunications conduit. Starting at Terrace Street and Tremont Street, we will be breaking out of Eversource manhole number 4881 and then placing conduit across Tremont Street to the proposed handhold in the furnishing zone in front of 700 Parker Street. This section of conduit will consist of one, of one four inch schedule 40 PVC conduit and one quad duct CD shadow. The next section of conduit will leave the proposed handhold and head south on Terra Street where it will rise at utility pole 77 over three. This section will also consist of one four inch schedule 40 PVC conduit and one quad duct city shadow. The contractor performing this work is aware that all services will need to be restored to prior condition or better. Also at the new business two weeks ago, the question was raised that Tremont Street might be a guaranteed street. However, we checked COVAX and no conflicts were found. If anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them at this time. Questions or comments from commission members? Yes, see staff or public? All set. I will entertain a motion on public hearing item number six. I move to approve a petition by Cambridge Network Solutions for a grant of location with lead company status in the area of Terra Street and Tremont Street as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stand or opposed? Great. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Uh, public hearing item number seven on a petition by Exonet Systems Inc. for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within Washington Street Public Way, West Roxbury, located generally between Grandfield Avenue and Mahler Street, Mahler Road, New Business 330, 2023, is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, Washington Street, Roslindale, 10 sheets dated March 2023. Good morning, and this is Keenan Brin. I'm here uh, representing Exonet Systems on behalf of the uh, construction of a fiber duct. I'm also joined by Han from NBNC Engineering, who prepared the plans, as well as Arthur Pino from Exonet Systems, who can speak to any construction questions. 
Uh, this application seeks permission to install a four-inch fiber conduit uh, along Washington Street, uh, roughly between Randfield Avenue and Fawndale Road. Uh, the approximate length is 1,835 linear feet. There's a short spur uh, right at Whipple Road of the Adams straight line for the 1,800 plus feet. Um, there will be city shadow duct installed and we'll, as usual, we'll coordinate with any businesses or residents about uh, parking and coordination. Um, again, the straight fiber installation along Washington Street for 1,800 plus feet. Uh, if you have any questions, Arthur and I'd be happy to take those on. Questions or comments from commission members? Uh, PIC staff, and I see one hand raised. Go for it, Dennis. Uh, just a quick question. I don't think it was, uh, this is a very large project in segments starting at uh, Metropolitan Avenue, and I've been in touch with Mr. Uh, Pino, Mr. Brin uh, separately. The question I have is uh, the NBTA uh, and the city have uh, bus lanes here. Uh, who is responsible for uh, filling in and remarking the MBTA bus lane. Is that done by Extinet as part of the project, or will that be uh, reverted back to the city and the MBTA? Uh, hello. Hi, folks. It's Arthur. Um, Dennis, that will have to be done by Extinet. We'll coordinate with the MBTA. Um, certainly, if, uh, if the bus has to be temporarily, um, the bus stop has to be temporarily relocated during construction, we'll work with them, and then all the remarking for that path, be it the MBTA crosswalks or whatever that may be, we'll have to be done by X and that will take them. All right, wonderful, thank you. And I'll be in touch separately uh, for the construction schedule uh, so we can give the business community a heads up. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So, here we go. Any other questions from the public? I see none. Okay, I see staff. All set. All right, I will entertain a motion on public hearing item number seven. I move to approve a petition by Extinet Systems for a grant of location to install new telecommunication conduit in the area of Washington Street as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Stand or opposed? Great. Thank you, Keenan and Arthur. Of course, thank you. Good day. All right, it's the end of the public hearing. So new business, uh, Cummins Highway, Harvard Street, Wood Avenue, Tampa Street, Livermore Street, Seminole Street, Kennebec Street, Waybosset Street, Greenfield Road, Ridlawn Road, Itasca Street, Rugby Road, Savannah Avenue, Foreman Road, Rockingham Road, Hollowell Street, Harmon Street, Richmere Road, Popper Street, Brockton Street, Woodhaven Street, Hollingworth Street, Regis Road, Rosewood Street, Rexford Street, Rockdale Street, Fairway Street, Dorchester, West Roxbury. Specific repairs on a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department. Anyway, Jeff. <laughs> Good morning, Chairman, Amy, um, members of the Commission. Um, my name is Jeffrey Alexis with the Public Works Engineering Division. Um, petitioning for the specific repairs on Cummins Highway between Harvard Street and Fairway Street. Um, I'm also joined by our design consultant from engineering. Um, I'll, I'll let Steve introduce him, himself shortly. Um, but before kicking it off to him, I, I wanted to uh, provide a little bit, um, a little background information on this major project um, that would not only revitalize Cum the Cummins Highway corridor, uh, but above all, improve safety for um, all modes of transportation. Um, Cummins Highway was identified as a high crash um, quarter um, based on the volume of injury causing crashes um, that occurred between 2015 and 2017. Um, and is among the most crash prone quarters um, citywide. Um, and when this reconstruction project was initiated back um, in October 2018, um, our main focus was to address like speeding um, and the safety concerns along this quarter. Um, in addition to the traffic safety issues, um, the roadway and sidewalks were poor conditioning. Um, the existing lighting did not pro uh, provide enough visibility at night, um, and the curb ramps were not accessible. Um, in order to address all these issues, um, we needed to take a holistic look at the corridor, um, 
four and a half years later, um, in collaboration with this other city departments um, and the Mattapan neighborhood, um, we developed this design that transforms Cummins Highway into a street that is safer for families to walk, wait for the bus, ride bikes, um, and or travel by vehicle. Um, also aligned with the city's goals, policies, initiatives, um, this design will become the largest capitally funded public works reconstruction project. Um, we're proposing green infrastructure, um, and this project will also provide a great bicycle connection from the Southwest Quarter um, and the Franklin Park Zoo in Dorchester um, to the Deposit River Trail in Mattapan. Um, another thing uh, that I want to point out is that um, this, this is a significant investment um, in the underserved neighborhood of Mattapan. Uh, and from what we've heard and gathered from um, the residents during our engagement and outreach process is that this project would be a, could be a major step in repairing um, the trust between the city and this Boston neighborhood. Um, especially if we hope to implement um, more of these transformative and quality of life improvement projects um, like this one. Um, lastly, um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that um, huge credit needs to go out to the transportation department um, and the active transportation team. Uh, they were vital in developing the design as most, and most importantly, um, developing the engagement process and strategy for the community. Um, with that, um, I'll kick it off to Steve um, and let him introduce himself and, and the project. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Commission members. My name is Steve Farber with Niche Engineering. Um, I'm just going to share my screen now. And can everyone see the Google image I have on the screen? Yes. Okay, so I just wanted to introduce the, the project as far as um, the limits of the project start at the Wood Harbor intersection here on the west end and continue all along Cummins Highway to about Fairway, which is about 300 feet from Mattapan Square. Um, this is one of the uh, PIC plans that we submitted. There's about uh, eight or nine sheets to uh, incorporate this whole 4,500 foot corridor. Um, Cummins Highway was last redesigned in the 1950s to remove trolley tracks and incorporate four travel lanes to facilitate faster vehicle trips from the suburbs south of Boston into the city. Uh, recently, as Jeff mentioned, Cummins Highway has developed into the one of the most crash-prone corridors in the city with vehicle speeds significantly higher than the 25 mile an hour speed. The project goals were to reduce these vehicle speeds, improve safety and accessibility for all modes of travel, and create a greener, more sustainable Cummins Highway. Input and feedback from the community was vital to developing the project design, and the project team, as Jeff mentioned, with the lead of from BTD, Public Works. Uh, we performed extensive public outreach over a two, two and a half year period, including three in-person and public meetings prior to COVID, um, over a dozen virtual meetings online, attendance at several farmers markets out in the neighborhood, and uh, multiple direct mailings to over 800 folks in the neighborhood. The project team developed multiple concepts and determined that a reduction in the travel lanes from four to two, one in each direction, would be the most effective way to achieve the project goal. To evaluate the impact of this dramatic change, we prepared a proof of concept demonstration in the field with temporary jersey barriers, waterfield jersey barriers, and drums uh, to evaluate what would happen to traffic when we did this reduction from four lanes to two. Um, the, re the results of the demonstration clearly indicated that the reduction in the travel lanes would not significantly or at all increase the delay and obstructing congestion along the corridor. The work involved, which is shown here on these drawings, and this is, I'll zoom in, the specific location of Cummins at Greenfield and Waibasa, where we have proposed to install a roundabout. This is an unsignalized intersection today, very wide open and very, very dangerous. So this will definitely slow vehicles down here. The work includes includes full depth roadway construction of the entire corridor, removal of the center median island, and the street lights will be re relocated from the center median to the sidewalks uh, on either side. Um, improvement, improved drainage structures, uh, replacement of street lights, as I mentioned, um, replacement of three traffic signal, signalized intersections, uh, the installation of 12 fire retention plans for stormwater management, uh, over 80 street trees will be installed along the corridor, new concrete sidewalks, head ramps, 
um, separated bicycle path with porous asphalt for again stormwater control, uh, recessed planter areas, new pavement markings and summits. So that's uh, the crux of the project as Jeff said, a very ambitious large project by the city and I'll take any questions. Questions or comments from commission members? KIC staff or public? We're good. Uh, great. I will entertain. Oh, well, no, this is our new business. So uh, you guys will be ready in two weeks. Well, four years and two weeks from now uh, on April 27th. Absolutely. All right. See you then. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Recording.